AI art. Companies are using them and boomers around the world can't seem to tell the difference. This video will be the first time I'm actually remaking a topic because I made a video about AI art last year and it was trend chasing and poorly researched. But now I'm one year older, no longer chasing trends and at least one brain cell less stupid. So let's try this again. Is AI generated artwork bad? Hey everyone, I'm sure you all noticed by now that there's a pimple on my lips which I did not realize while I was recording. Try not to get distracted by that red dot moving across my beautiful face throughout this entire video. Okay, let's get started. I previously made the argument that AI image generator or AIGs as I will now shorten for brevity is bad because of how it works. I'm not going to reiterate the legality of it because a lot of people smarter than I have already done so. As for the mechanics of it, while my previous video on the subject was mostly filled with errors, the specific part about how AIGs works still stands strong, so I will let past Aiden talk about this. Stable diffusion gets its name from how it generates its art, true diffusion. It's a process which first takes a bunch of random images from its dataset and turn it into noise. For us mere mortals, these noise are gibberish, but to the software, these are codes it can read. It then removes the noise for an altered image to take shape. The neural network then comes in to fill in the gaps, adding in details to create a new artwork. Do this a few hundred or a few thousand times with specific selection from specific artworks, and you start getting images that may look eerily familiar to what AI generators produce. Content aware fields or smart patches are tools used in photo manipulation softwares like Photoshop or Krita. They are usually used to remove an unwanted object from an image. How they work is the software samples a bunch of the surroundings, mixes up the samples before copying and pasting it over the space you want to patch by guessing where lines and shapes go. But if you do it with non-defined or mixed spaces, something weird starts to happen, like hands growing out of other hands or fingers twisting over each other in weird ways. One of this is generated by an AI and the other by me in Photoshop using the methods above. Can you guess which is which? There's a reason why AI art are notorious for having really shit hands and funky text because it's using the same basic logic as calves and smart patches. For legal reasons, I cannot say that this is definitely the process that Stable Diffusion use, but the fact that it has to use a noise and denoising protocol, aka diffusion, means it has to steal images. Unless there's some new magical quantum technology I've not heard of, it's the only way this works. That's why you see artifacting like this. Man, look at me. So filled with hope. So young. One year ago. As the technology progresses, the process becomes more accurate and efficient, but no less different. The foundation of how it works remains the same. That is to say, there is no logical way for these softwares to function without using other people's artwork. It is just not possible. Which means just from this alone, the legal and technical side of the argument for AIGs have already fallen. But what I want to really talk about isn't the technology or the legality. I want to talk about the philosophy and cultural mindset surrounding this topic instead. I want to focus on the arguments AIG proponents make when they can't argue on the technicality. Let's start with the idea that AI art is creativity. Proponents like to argue that the process of AIGs are no different from human creativity. And again, on the technicality of it, that's simply wrong. But that's not what I'm going to argue. I'm going to argue on the point of creativity. Is this creativity in any way? Let's not weave into the topics of tracing, learning, inspiration, or copying. The summerton scale, as some other handsome YouTubers might call it. At the crux of it, creativity itself is the ability to come up with something new. And that was the question I asked. Can AIGs come up with something new? Something never seen before. So that's what I did. I created a new concept that never existed and asked an AIG using the 5 billion image large Lion dataset to come up with what it looks like. The idea is ergonomic punk, a punk style of fashion or world similar to the aesthetical ideas of cyberpunk, but instead based off ergonomical designs. And after trying dozens of prompts, I have to ask, do any of these look ergo punk to you? 
Also, they are all women, which is a point of contention of the racism and sexism of AIGs. But anyway, that's the fatal error when arguing creativity in AIGs. The technology cannot make something that didn't exist before in their dataset. It cannot create a style or idea without copying something else. And you might be asking, hey fat man, you can't do it either. To which I can only reply, yes, I can. Though I'm not an artist, a trained illustrator, even I could take a simple template and come up with ergopunk designs. Because while AIG can mash images together to create new ones, creativity is about mashing ideas, something that the technology just can't do. It's impossible for AIGs to create. You know the create part of creativity? Speaking of mashing ideas, are AI prompters artists? No. Bye. That there's there's not enough space for me to walk off the screen. So um, you, you know what? Fine. I'll talk about it. Building on the idea of AIG's lack of creativity, proponents would then say that AIGs are just tools, and the creativity comes from the people prompting an AIG. It's like artists and pencils, you know. And you know what? They are right. Well. Mostly. Not about the pencil part. That part is wrong. The problem is, art isn't about creativity. Art is about transformation. It doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be original. To do art, you just have to make something out of something else. Baking can be an art. Car manufacturing can be an art. Heck, Martial arts is about turning one form of body movement into another. It's about transforming one medium into a different one and giving it meaning. Turning pencil lads into drawings, words into stories, videos into essays. Prompters do none of that. All that is being done by the AIGs. The cultural definition of artists that people think of when the word is mentioned is a combination of transformation and creativity. But in AIG art, the prompter has the creativity and in a loose sense, the AIG makes the transformation. Unlike real art in which both are in the control of the person, they are not one and the same. It's like calling myself an artist if I commissioned someone else to draw on my behalf, or calling myself a baker if I bought bread from a store, even calling myself an engineer for designs I hired other people to do, hypothetically. In the same way AIGs are just really complex photocopy machines, the text generators like ChatGPT are just really complex autocomplete. Prompters aren't artists. They are managers. And do you know what managers do? They care about the cost. Speaking of which, art is too expensive. This Galaxy Brain tech comes from the same people who thought NFTs and crypto was the future of copyright and money. It comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of the topic itself. They don't actually think art is too expensive. That's just what they say. Because when you actually get down to it, when you tear apart the technical and legal clusterfuck, what they actually think is that art should be cheap. If they could, they don't think artists should be paid at all. What they actually think is that art should be worth less. These people have been receiving the privilege of viewing artworks online for free without understanding the financial ecosystem behind their ability to do so. In the same way crypto bros did not understand how money works while using currencies or NFT bros don't understand cryptography and copyright, AI art proponents don't understand art. They think that artists who put their portfolios out in public are doing it for them the viewers, instead of what it actually was for, which is to show people willing to pay for the art style their work. Online art profiles are linked in portfolios to find people willing to pay them. The people willing to pay can be companies, fans, or even ad agencies. It's like watching an ad on YouTube and thinking that it's for your entertainment. My videos are free on YouTube not because that's what they are worth. I'm doing it to get subscribers so that I can get paid. In fact, these lovely Patreons are right now paying for my ability to give you these videos for free. They are essentially my commissioners, my boss. Like artists who were given the permission to share commission artworks with the public, you are receiving the outcome of someone else's monetary kindness. The cost of free artworks online didn't change. Someone else just paid for everyone else to see them, which is an ironic situation for these anarcho-capitalists because this is a form of socialism. The art side of the internet is like a museum. 
someone or some institution paid the value amount for artworks to be displayed so that the public can enjoy them for a low cost or even for free. Some artists even donate the artwork out of the kindness of their heart, but they are never doing it just for free. But because these galaxy brain sociopaths can't put themselves in the shoes of others, they have come to the conclusion that art is worthless because they get it for free. It's like being treated to see the Mona Lisa by a friend and thinking, eh, I can do better. That's why they're so confident in saying shit like these. They do not have a good sense of what makes good art. They just think they do. That's why AIG proponents can genuinely claim that this is good art. And anyone who can truly appreciate art, who understands why art costs so much money, can immediately tell you that it's not. They saw something that looks nice to their limited taste and decided that's a good standard to copy without understanding why. No care was taken for composition, framing, storytelling, weight, scaling, color theories, and a bunch of other things that artists have to think about. They've left all of that to a machine that's just a bunch of probability algorithms running on a random seed they typed and modified by a neural network. Everything that fuses the concept of creativity and transformation thrown out for a lifeless facsimile. Even the best case scenarios for AIG usage kills in comparison to something made by actual human hands. AIGs are like the crypto and NFT waves before it. It doesn't matter to proponents if the way the tech is being used is good or bad, moral or lawful, harmful or tasteless. Because once you understand how the tech works, maybe even sit and think about the philosophical implications for a moment or just like learn to have good taste. You cannot justify the current way it's being used. The tech itself is amoral. It's not even a pencil. It's a box, a copy machine that proponents have decided to fill with stolen artwork. These people do not have any moral, technical, legal, or artistic ground to stand on, so they have to lean into denigrating the things they are stealing, saying shit that amounts to the idea that you shouldn't pay someone to do though. And then they wait for people with even less knowledge about the technology than them to come in to boost their numbers. For AI proponents, the morality of the tech doesn't matter, because as far as they are concerned, it is is the future. It is inevitable. You artists are going to be obsolete, worthless, replaceable, adapt or die. Then they turn around and pretend it's for the greater good. We are democratizing art by giving it to everyone. And in the next breath, complain about how other AI prompters are stealing their prompts. Personally, I'm not against AI generators. The problem is how we're using it. The technology itself is interesting and can be helpful, but right now it's powered by and being used for human suffering, especially those of artists. The proponents right now are trying to turn art's value into zero because that would justify their use of AIGs, not by raising their own value, but by lowering everyone else's. They will drown every artist and consumer in a sludge of AI art, powered by the fuel they stole from the industry they set fire to, and they will try to convince everyone that the only way to survive is to help them burn others by stealing more fuel. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Again, my beautiful, handsome, and smart patrons, right here, like, here. I don't know, I recently upgraded my editing software, so I got access to some new effects. I don't know how the... I don't know if I'm going to do them. I don't know if they look nice. Whatever. I may revisit this topic uh, another time in the future because I want to talk about AI text generators like ChatGPT. The logic of its basic programming is the same, but because it's processing far less information than art, the technology is growing much faster. It doesn't change the underlying issues with the technology, but I would like things to stabilize a little more before I cover it, just in case, you know, something shifts in the way that it's being run. Housekeeping for my regular viewers, I'm working on a relatively large video in the coming months. I've been releasing my videos on a three to four week schedule, but with this big video in the works, I might push my schedule back to a fixed four weeks, maybe even a five weeks. And uh, it's quite a big problem because quick releases are one of the best ways for small channels like mine to grow. But I don't want to rush videos out because as I've learned from my previous AI video, mistakes can be made and I don't want to give you guys bad information. If you want to support me in a non-monetary way, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe and share because those are the fastest way for my channel to grow without pumping out videos every other week. Other than that, my next video in May will be about mental health in 
celebration observance of mental health month last year i did a bunch of skits about mental health misconceptions but this year i want to really focus that same energy into one video so if you guys have any questions about mental health or what it's like living with a chronic mental health issue comment in the description and i will answer it in the next video otherwise i will just go on reddit for questions that's it for now thank you for watching i will see you next time bye